Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity that we can have once again to be here and to minister and to be ministered to as well. We know, Lord God, that the true teacher in the church, in the house of God, is the Holy Spirit. So we ask you, Holy Spirit, that you be the one in charge today. You be the teacher for us and that we would receive from you and that we would not just get information, but that you would make this information come alive, bringing it into a revelation of who you are, what you've done, so that we may also understand who we are and the things that we are destined to do because we have eternal life in you. So we thank you for that. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. How many of you were here the last time I got up to preach? Were you here? Amen. So the last time I was here, I was talking about the book of Romans chapter 8. And since in the NLTC now, I have a lot of load. Madami akong teaching load in NLTC. I'm in that mode right now. I'm in a teaching mode. All right. So is it okay if we continue in that teaching Amen. I la- there are times I want to preach. There are times, but there are times I really want to get up here and I want to teach because I believe the Word of God is. You know, we we have this we have this saying in New Life North Metro that when food is served and it is in abundance and it's really good, what do we say about the food? Huh? Ano daw? Sha- no, not Sharon. Sharon is what you do when you're eating the food. When nobody's finished yet, they take the food now. We call it solid. When the food is good and there's a lot, you know, the first thing that comes out of the mouth of of the people in North Metro is, wow, solid. And I believe the Word of God is solid. Amen. That when we read the Word, it's like, wow, the Word of God is solid. So we're going to solidify more Word today. Amen. Amen. But of course, as any teacher, I will have to read through the verses that I've already gone through before and kind of give you a brief summary or understanding of these verses. So if you would give me at least a few minutes to go through this before I teach. Is that okay? So if you've heard this before, praise be to God. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The more we hear, the more faith arises in us. So if you have the book of Romans with you in your tablet, in your phone, or if you have a Bible with you, would you please open to Romans chapter 8? And nobody's doing anything, so that means nobody brought their Bible to church. So in in that case, we will have it up here. We'll start with Romans 8.1. Aren't we so nice? You know... Like we go to war, you don't have a gun, huh? What am I doing? It's gera, me gera. Wala akong weapon ato. Here, take mine. We want you to be ready. Amen. So let's begin Romans chapter eight, verse one. Therefore, there is now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. This is not a question. This is a statement that if you are in Christ you have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then condemnation should not be a part of your life. But even though there are times that we do feel condemned, yes, so if you feel condemnation, understand that that condemnation is not from God and it's either from the enemy who wants you to run away from God or the Bible says yourself, your soul condemns you. Your mind, your will, your emotions. How many of you know that your emotions can make you feel condemned at times? Have you ever felt bad about doing something? And usually when you feel bad, you like to hide. Have you ever made a mistake and then hid that mistake and blamed your sibling? Come on, have you ever blamed somebody else for your mistake? Come on, condemnation will make you do that. But in Christ, we need to understand That sin is dealt with, not with condemnation, but through conviction. Let's go back to verse 1 again. Sorry. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. So what is the law of sin and death? 
It basically says, the wages of sin is death. The consequences of sin is death. That if you make a mistake, death belongs to you. It is your, what do you say, your consequence. But how many of you know that in Christ Jesus, there is a law that overshadows or overpowers that law? It's just like gravity. Is gravity constant? If you are on earth, gravity is constant, yes? But how is, that, how is it that airplanes can fly and humans cannot fly? Because there is another law that allows the plane to fly. That is the law of thrust and lift. Do you understand? Gravity is still there. But thrust and lift allows them to overcome gravity. The law of sin and death is still present. Just because Jesus rose from the dead, it didn't erase the law because many people are still experiencing death because of sin. Come on, do you hear me? But in Christ, is anybody in Christ here? There is a greater law that allows us to be set free from the law of sin and death. And this is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. It allows us to live a life of freedom in Christ. Amen po ba? Now this is all just review, but I hope you're understanding what I'm saying. Yes po ba? Amen. Verse 3. For what the law could not do, that it was weak through the flesh, God did by sending His own Son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He condemned sin in the flesh. Verse 4, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. What is this saying? What was it that set us free from the law of sin and death? It was Jesus Christ only. Can I make this clear? Good works does not set you free from the law of sin and death. When we were in Thailand, everybody ever been to Thailand? Oh, two. Anybody else ever been to? Or any Buddhist nation? Anybody ever been to any Buddhist nation? Have you ever noticed they have temples? And in these temples, they have huge statues. Golden statues. And in these, statue, in these temples, they have offerings. And we asked one time in our honeymoon, wow, honeymoon, over, te, what, five years ago? No, 13 years ago, we went on our honeymoon. And of course, we were very intrigued to understand what they do in, 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 this, in their religion. So we asked our guide, why do they offer sacrifice? Is it for the forgiveness of sin? And the person said, what? No. Sin can never be forgiven. And I said, really? Yeah. What we believe is that if you do bad, then you must do good in order, what you call this, it's karma. If you do bad, you must be, do good to overcome, you know. So what happens in the end? Well, if you do more bad in your life than you do good, then too bad for you. But if you do good, then you're in a better place. You understand? So I said, so why do you offer sacrifice? Oh, just thanksgiving. It's just basically us thanking God, our God for all the blessings. So even there, they understood that what you do, your sacrifices, is still not enough to forgive sin. Amen. So in a sense, they understood that sin cannot be forgiven through human effort. For what the law could not do, meaning doing right and wrong, could not do because it was weak in the flesh. Why? Because the flesh will always succumb to sin. The flesh will always want to sin again. Tama po ba? That's why he said, don't worry, God already did. Praise be to God that he already did it by sending Jesus. And whoever receives him, you no longer walk according to the flesh. Although we have flesh, we now walk according to the Spirit because we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Amen po ba? So is it understood? Again, this is just a review. Lord, help me. Ang haba ng review na to. Six minutes to finish this review in Jesus' name. Verse 5. 
For those who live according to the flesh sets their mind on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit sets their mind on the things of the Spirit. Would you like to walk according to the Spirit? Then make you set your mind that you are no longer who you used to be. You are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are not the person you used to be anymore. Amen? You are a new creation in Christ Jesus. For to be carnally minded, meaning thinking that nothing has changed when you receive Jesus, is death. But to be spiritually minded, meaning you know that you are a new creation, you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, that is being spiritually minded. This will bring life and peace. The carnal mind is against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So if you continue to live in the flesh, continue to live the way you always did, it is not pleasing to God. But God still loves you. Amen? But you, listen, but you are not in the flesh. But in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you, what determines if you are in the flesh or if you are in the Spirit? Your actions? Your thoughts? No! The Spirit of God dwelling in you determines if you are in the Spirit or in the flesh. So my question is, how many of you here have the Spirit of God living inside of you? Could you please raise your hand? Therefore, can I tell you today, you are not in the flesh. You are in the Spirit. Eh, Pastor, hindi mo naman kilala asawa ko. Naku, hindi in the Spirit yan, Pastor. Sa church, yes. Pero pagdating sa bahay, carnal. Kaya tawag ko sa kanya, carn, carn. Ano carn? Carnal. See, that doesn't, how, you, how we behave does not determine whether we are in the spirit in the flesh but being in the spirit will eventually determine or adjust our behavior if you don't have the spirit of god mahihirapan ka to act like a person who is spirit filled because you don't have the spirit of god but if you have the spirit of god then if you trust the spirit put your mind that you are not who you used to be then you will see transformation in your life. Amen? Clear po ba? Okay, very good. But you are not in the flesh if the Spirit indeed lives in you. Now, if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. And if Christ is in you, is Christ in you? The body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life. Because of, so the righteousness, where do we get our righteousness from? Everybody say Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin for us so that we would become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who dwells in you. Now, this doesn't mean only that God will heal you. You know, last Sunday in our afternoon service, many people experienced healing. During the afternoon service, there's a ministry time and many people experienced healing. This healing was only possible because of the Holy Spirit. But this verse is also talking about giving life to your mortal body, meaning your body will now begin to change its desires. No longer will your body only desire the things of the flesh or sinful things. How many of you know that in Christ, the Spirit of God will also change our desires? Before you used to love to sin, now you no longer love to sin. Correct? That's not normal to a carnal body. A carnal body wants to sin. But if you are in Christ, that desire will begin to change. Especially if you begin to starve wrong desires and replace them with good desires. Amen po ba? Are you still there? 
verse 12. Therefore, brethren, are we brothers and sisters here? We are no longer deb debtors or slaves to the flesh to live according to the flesh. Before, we were slaves. Slaves to sin. Parang kanta ni ano yan ah. Isn't it? Slave, anyway, never mind. We're no longer slaves to sin. Amen. Amen. Before we were slaves, we had no choice. We just kept doing it. But now, because your debt has been paid, how was your debt paid? Through Jesus Christ. You're no longer a slave. I'm, that's this song you know. I'm no longer a slave to sin. I am a child of God. No more. No, tell your neighbor, no more. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if you live by the Spirit, you will put to death the deeds of the flesh, and you will live. And this is where this verse comes into context. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons or mature sons of God. Maturity in the body of Christ comes when you begin to no longer walk according to the flesh, but you now begin to walk in the Spirit. This is what this verse means in context. Verse 15, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. No longer slaves, you have been adopted, and now you are children of God. Amen? We cry out, Abba, Father! Abba! Siya, Abba! Abba! That means He is our Father. He is our source. Whenever we need something, He is our source. For the Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. We are all children. But mature children, we need to begin to see a transformation in our walk. No longer walking according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. We are all children, but my prayer is that we are also all mature. Amen? By faith, pastor. Sige, sige na. By faith. And if children, then we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with Him, that we may also be glorified with Him. Now, I will now start my new, the new part, which I did not really touch on the last time. And yeah, so are you ready? So verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. Context. Context, context, context. What were we talking about all this time? From the beginning of the verse. Ano pinag-usapan natin? From the beginning of the verse all the way down to verse 17. Anong pagka, ano yung made, kung if you could give one sentence, you can just shout it out if you would like to. To just say, what, what, what is this, these verses trying to say? Pwede Tagalog, pwede English. Anybody willing to shout? Kasi if you whisper, hindi, wala akong bionic ears. Hindi ako marinig, nakarinig. New creation! And if you are a new creation, anong dapat mangyari pag ikaw ay new creation? Led by the Spirit. In other words, kailangan magbago ka na. Hindi ba? This, all these verses are saying, come on, kailangan magbago ka na. How many of you know that's hard? And minsan, it causes you to suffer. Come on. Let's be honest here. Let's be honest here. Sometimes when we are confronted with temptation, it's not so easy to just turn around and say, Turn around every now and then. Again. Turn around. We do it so easy. Would you like the mic? Is this open night, open karaoke night? But sometimes it's not that easy to turn around when temptation comes. 
Especially the temptation to get angry. Somebody hurts, slaps you on your right cheek. Turn around, give your left cheek. Sometimes it's not that easy. Come on. Any real believers here? And sometimes it feels like it's suffering to do the right thing. Pastor, bakit ang hirap maging kristyano? What do you mean? Everybody else is doing whatever they want and I have to do the Bible? Yeah. Ang hirap! Bakit sila? Bakit and then I'm, rem I'm reminded of the story of Robert last week. Many of us are like the Egypt, like the, 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 the Jews. Hala, they're coming back for us. Why are we here? We're going to die now. Let's just go back. Let's just be slaves again. Many people would say, I don't like to be a Christian. It's so hard. I'll just go back to how I used to be. But can I say something? How can you go back? When you're no longer that person anymore. You have been changed. You're no longer that sinful person. You are the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. But in this journey of sanctification, sometimes we see, you know, the things that are happening. And how many of you know that sin brings suffering? So this is one end, how believers have a difficult time in walking in the newness of life that Jesus has given them. But can I tell you there's an answer to that that can help you? And it's called the grace of God. And the grace of God is not just for... You see, help me, Jesus. If we look as grace as just forgiveness of sin, then we will keep on sinning because we know forgiveness will always be there. And the danger of people who just see grace as forgiveness of sin will never really truly walk in transformation life because they're not appropriating that grace as an enabling power for them to walk in that transformed life. They will end up sinning and sinning and sinning and saying, well, I'm under grace anyway, so I am free from condemnation. But yet, when you close your eyes at night, you will hear that voice saying, Hoy! Ginagawa mo! What are you doing? No, sometimes it doesn't sound like that. Sometimes it's very gentle. Yeah? But sometimes we need the hoy. Come on. Do we, sometimes do we need the hoy? You know, sometimes we need the... Mm. You know, look at your neighbor. You know, sometimes you want to like... Mm. Mm. I love you. Mm. Mm. Come on, right? So... We understand if we just look as grace, as just forgiveness of sin, we're not going to really walk in transformational life because we're just going to appropriate grace every time we fall short. And I'm a believer. I, I'm, you know, we're just human. We will always fall short. Then you give excuse to it. But God did not call us to live, continue living as debtors to sin, but He called us free. And the same grace that forgave you is the same grace that will transform you, that will enable you to walk, that is not going to be suffering. Amen. This is the resurrection life that we have in Christ Jesus. We are more than conquerors in Christ. Amen. Are you here? So, yes, grace is, is forgiveness, 100%. But it is also that transformational power that's going to bring out the righteousness that God has brought, given you on the inside and let that righteousness be seen on the outside. Because there's a world that is suffering because of sin. Here's the other end of the story. Not just suffering for believers, but now the world that is bound by sin 
and the devil is in control, and you can see it everywhere. Now, I'm not going to talk about politics. I'm just saying everywhere, through poverty to sickness and disease to evil. There's so much evil in the world. Just open your social media pages. You will see the evil that's in the world. Is there hope? Absolutely. For everyone, yes. His name is Jesus. He's, who, he's the one that changed us. Amen? And he has the power to change everyone. Are you here with me? So we know that these sufferings can be twofold. One, as the believer trying to walk, you know, the transformational life without appropriating the grace of God. Because when you put the grace of God in your life, you will realize it's not as hard as it's supposed to be. Amen? When, and then it says here, for, for I consider the suffering of this present time will not be worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. So what happens? Meaning as you continue to trust God, I trust in God, my Savior. As we continue to trust in God, that He who began a good work in us is faithful to complete it, we will now begin to see the goodness of God. See, the glory is the goodness of God. And we will begin to see the goodness of God in our lives. And then we begin to have testimonies. Testimonies after testimonies after testimonies. One of the students in Bible school asked me this week, yeah, Pastor, how do you debate your faith? Josh, debate your faith, no? How do you debate? I will never forget that. How will you debate your faith? I said, I don't believe as believers we should debate our faith as in a need to defend it in a way that you're wrong, we're right, which we know you know, when you tell a person they're wrong, then automatically you lost the conversation. But then you cannot have more than one truth. The reality is there is only one truth. There is no your truth and my truth. Can we make that clear? So there is only one truth. So in essence, we as believers feel we need to fight for that truth. We need to debate for that truth. We need to make a stand for that truth. But I would like you to know that if it's about biblical knowledge or knowledge of, of the, the book, other religions have a grasp, a much greater grasp on their book than unfortunately we believers have on our book. Because many of us have grown up being taught, you're not allowed to read that. That's not for you. Only certain people can understand the Bible, which is not true. That we realize that we all have the ability to understand our Bibles through the Holy Spirit. Amen. But if we're going to fight or debate, we might end up... Uh, so they said, so how do, how, what do you do? I said, the Bible is very clear. Jesus said that he will confirm his words through accompanying signs and wonders. That is our edge. That when we pray for the sick in the name of Jesus and the sick recovers, they cannot say anything about that. Come on, did you hear me? I remember one person was saying, you know, when, I, when I was falling from air, the parachute could not open. I don't know if it's a joke, but... They were calling all the gods one by one, one by one, one by one, to see which one would work. And then when they finally got to Jesus, the parachute opened. So when they got down, they said, okay, I'm a Christian now. Why? Because he's the only one who answered when I was falling from the airplane. Amen. Why? Because our God is faithful. Those whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Amen. Whether whatever religion you are in, if you call upon Jesus, he will hear you and he will save you. Amen. So in essence, the word is confirmed. The glory of God is seen through the Holy Spirit. Your testimony, nobody can take that away from you. God moving, changing your life? They can say, no, 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 bro. 
You cannot take that away from me. I was sick, He healed me. I was an addict, He freed me. I was dead, He brought me back to life. No one can take that from you. And that is the glory of God that will be revealed in us first. Because once it's revealed in you, then it will be revealed through you. If you are willing. Amen? God will start in you first. His faithfulness, His goodness. He's just going to do something in your life. Are you willing to trust Him with your life? Why did He give us the Holy Spirit? It's to confirm His Word. Ephesians 1 says the Holy Spirit is our proof that whatever God said, He would give. Jesus said to wait, not because they didn't know Him. These disciples knew Jesus. These disciples knew every, saw everything He ever did. But He's not saying, I don't want you to minister because of my stories. I want you to minister because of your stories. Wouldn't you love that? I remember in Bible school, I was sitting down and Pastor Paul was teaching most of the classes and I was in there, his story after story after story and they're asking me now, how come Pastor Paul doesn't teach much in Bible school? Because Pastor Paul will teach one minute of his lesson and 30 minutes of his stories. But he loves, to, because he's experienced the goodness of God. And I remember sitting in that school and saying, Lord, I want my own stories. And I praise God today that in one way or another, I may not have as much as him because he's 20 years older than me so I can still catch up. But I have my own stories to share. And I believe you have your own stories to share as well. Because God is not just faithful to me. He's faithful to us. And the Holy Spirit does not just live in me. He lives in all of us. Amen? So you may be suffering at the moment, but the glory of God, the goodness of God is being ready to be revealed in your life. Are you ready for that, church? The enemy that you saw now, you will see no more. Amen? Verse 19, For the earnest expectation of creation eagerly waits for the revealing of the sons of God. What are the sons of God revealing? Who are we revealing? The Holy Spirit. That's what this verse is talking about. Who are we revealing? Of course, through our transformed lives. Now, I want to encourage you. Many people will be afraid to share because they think, well, I'm still a work in progress. I cannot, I'm not matured yet. I still have a lot to work on. Has God already done something in your life? Do you have at least one thing that He has changed in your life? Then you are already qualified to get up there. Amen? You already have a story. But pastor, that's my only story. I want more stories. Then continue to step out in faith. And you will begin to see more stories come to your life. And it's your story. Isn't it great that you're the bida? Ikaw yung bida, hindi na kontra bida. Ikaw na yung bida sa inyong kwento. Amen? Come on, are you hearing me? It's just wonderful to know that God has stories waiting for us. And you know who's waiting? The world is waiting. The people around you who have been mocking you, and watching you, and saying things about you, and putting you down, and saying to you, you call yourself a Christian, ako ba talaga? Hmm. <laughs> Come on. They're the ones that when, the, when the, you begin to reveal the Holy Spirit, they're the first ones going to run to you. And they're like, I'm going to run to you. Ooh, I'm going to run to you and say, could you please share me your Jesus? Amen? Verse 20. 
For the creation was subjected to futility, not willingly, but because of him who subjected it in hope. Because the creation itself will also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the children of God. So what's it saying here? That right now, because of sin, and sin having a hold on creation, now creation is not just the birds and the trees. We're talking about different nations, groups of people. You don't even have to go far. You don't even, hi, ah, pastor, I'm called to Africa. No, why don't you start with the people in your home? Aren't they not part of creation? Make that Before you want to get on a plane to go to Africa, when you may never go home because they may put your head on a stick, but why don't you start your mission, missionary journey in your own home and begin to be the testimony there in your own home? Because as you are faithful with little, God will give you opportunity for much more. But the thing is, many of us want the big. We want to go. We want the large crowds. But if we've never proven ourselves faithful in the little crowds, you're just going to set yourself up for failure in the big crowd. Amen? How hard it is for me to... Min I think God, my wife, sits on the front row when I preach. Why? I love you too. I don't know. She's trying to think. Because this woman knows me. More than any of you know me. She knows everything about me. And as I'm preaching, I've never heard her, well, maybe. I once go, but <laughs> Never nga, I sense saying. So it, it helps me as a minister to minister to you, knowing that the people closest to me who really know me, even the smell of my armpits without deodorant. That's why. I'm saying it smells good. You understand? They're, they're able to receive from me. And for me, that's a, whew, thank you, Lord. Because it's hard when you're trying to minister to everyone and the people closest to you are like, Faker, Tupperware, right? That's hard. You're sharing and then you get into the car. Galing-galing magwerda. Sa bahay, wala kang ginagawa. Come on. Come on. Can we be honest? I'm called to the ministry. I'm called to the ministry. Hugas ka ng pinggan. These are holy hands. Ito, holy soap, joy, fruit of the Spirit. Come on. Exercise, exercise the fruit of the Spirit. Joy. Get rid of pride. Joy only. Diba? Come on. You want to be in ministry? Start in your house. How do you treat your wife? How do you treat your husband? How do you treat your children? If you have household help, how do you treat your help? How do you treat your parents? Oh, I'm not going there. Amen? Are you there? Why? Because they are the first that's going to be watching. They're the first watching. And if we prove ourselves faithful with them, then God's going to give us a bigger sphere. And then a bigger sphere. And then a bigger sphere. Amen? Are you still there? Verse 22, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pangs together until now. I like this because it lets me know that whatever we are going through, the evil that we see that we're going through as a world is temporary. Because any woman knows when you're in labor, it hurts. But then there is a giving birth. And with that birthing comes, it may hurt during the birthing, but when your child is there, you notice the joy 
that that child brings. I believe God is doing something in this world. And he's, he's, God is still in control. Amen? Yeah. Although people have the free will to choose wrong. That's why there's a lot of evil in this world. The people have the free will to choose death over life. But God is going to make his will come to pass. And so don't grow weary in doing well, brothers and sisters. For in due season, you may be in labor at the moment. But in due season, you will see the birthing of what God has. Birthing, labor always precedes birthing. Amen? Amen? Why? Because that's what sin brought into the world. Remember the curse? Because of sin, your birthing will now have labor attached to it. Come on, you hear me? Sin brought that about. But guess what? At least we have the ability to give birth. Amen? Verse 23, not only that, but we also who have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, eagerly waiting for the adoption, the redemption of our body. Now what does this mean? It means that salvation is for ev every part of us. Spirit, soul, and body. So you mean this body is going to be saved? Yes. One day, I will have a glorified body. Meaning, walang taba. May baba. Hindi lang dalawa, isa. Matino. Amen. Because Christ's salvation it's for the spirit, it's for the soul, it's for the body. Now, when will that happen, Pastor? When He comes again. When Jesus comes again, our bodies will be glorified. Until then, you're going to have to work. <laughs> you're going to have to go to the gym, you're going to have to diet, you're going to have to take care of yourselves, you're going to have to, you're going to, have to walk. There are birthing pangs before <laughs> seeing the fruit. Amen. But you know what? There is hope. You know what this is, these verses are telling me? There's hope. It may be hard for a while. Usually the beginnings are hard. But if you keep with God, if you trust in God, He will never fail. He will never fail. And He will get us through. His grace is sufficient. Amen. Gonna, let's kind of finish this up. For we were saved, verse 24, in this hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For why does one still hope for what he sees? But if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience, with perseverance. It's talking about hope for what? Seeing God's will be done in our life. Amen? And I'm going to end with this verse. Likewise, the Spirit also helps us in our weaknesses. For when we do not know what we should pray, as we ought, the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the heart knows what the mind of the Spirit is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Ending with that, what does it mean? Very simple. When we do not know what to do, when we are weak, when we are lost, when we are, God has given us His Holy Spirit. And, he, and this prayer language, now this prayer language is different from the gifts of the Spirit. The gift of the Spirit in tongues is basically being able to speak another known tongue that you do not know. Like me speaking fluent Spanish. I do not 
understand Spanish fluently. But all of a sudden, if God desires, there's a Spanish person in front of me. And God says, go witness to that person. And I'm like, I don't know how to speak Spanish. Just go. And I open my mouth and I start to speak fluent Spanish. And I'm able to understand fluent Spanish as well. That is the gift of tongues and the gift of interpretation of tongues. This is not your prayer language. Your prayer language is given to you so that you can tap into the Spirit of God which is in you for when you do not know what to do, when you are weak, when you don't know what to pray. Allow the Spirit of God to pray on your behalf. Why? Because He knows all things. He knows the heart, not just our heart. He knows the Father's heart. And my greatest desire is to be able to walk and pray out and fulfill the heart of the Father, not just my heart. And my prayer is that we would have the same desire as well. Amen? Did you get something today? Come on, let's give God praise for that. Amen? Lord, thank you. Thank you for the time that we had in the Word. Thank you that we could receive, we are able to receive from you today. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. This whole Romans chapter 8 was just reminding us that you have given us your Spirit and that, that your Spirit has the transformation power to change our lives and also to bring about testimonies and good things that you have prepared for us. Ephesians 2.10 says, We are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, so that we may do these good works which you have predestined to us, for us, so that we may walk in them, living the good life which you have prearranged and made ready for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.